morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to this episode of Shift. I'm your host, Palmonia Gordon. Thank you for stopping by today. As a reminder, Shift is simply helping individuals find their truth, their passion, and their purpose. This is our way of serving you in the community as we meet, as we share thoughts, stories, ideas, in hopes of helping us to grow together. So my topic today is, one, they don't believe because that's the answer um, I received, or if you ask the right question, you have to ask the right question to get the right answer. So I I know of this pastor that during the pandemic in one year, he made almost half a million dollar just by helping other people who needed jobs, who needed food, whatever it is that they, all he did was help them and he got rewarded for it. And I I stop and I'm, I mean, you know, I talk to myself a bit, right guys? Yeah, Palmonia Gordon, your house background, Postal employee picked up my bag to go to work one day. The thought of going postal made sense. That's how I get to spend time with you now. So I said, Father, how is it one person can is able to achieve 400000 plus, half a million dollars in one year, and other pastors can't? And the answer literally shocked me. God said, because they don't believe. I go, huh? And you go, yeah, people don't believe. If you believe that something is possible, there's nothing that's going to stop you from going out to achieve it. It's when we don't believe that it's possible and that it's all right and that we're entitled to it and that it's a gift or a privilege or whatever you want to call it, then we don't take action to realize that gift. And I'm like, oh, wow. So I started to have a couple of uh, scripture verses and passages, memory that came to mind and looked up some more. But even in the book of Exodus, when the children of Israel were prisoners, were, were slaves to the Egyptians and they were building everything, God promised them, I think in the beginning of Exodus, when he called Moses and says, listen, I need you to go set these people free. And one of the uh, promise or the instructions that he got said, when you guys leave, you're going to plunder the Egyptians. Literally, you're kind of going to rob them, right? But as you go through and you, when you get to verse 10 and 11, it actually shows you where God instructs them and says, go to your neighbor and go and ask for them to borrow silver and gold. And in verse um, 12, I think, verse 1135, it says, and the children of Israel did as the Lord said, and they barred off the Egyptians, jewels of silver and gold and raiment. Because, I mean, we're going out. We've labored for you for so long. What do we have? What are we going to have as our sacrifice? What are we going to use to sell it? What are we going to use to clothe ourselves? So now this is a, a challenge. I mean, yes, please comment, subscribe. Please let me know, Palmona, what you're talking don't make sense. And then let us have that conversation. Because many people are in church. And if the pastor don't say that it is so, it ain't never going to happen no matter what is in the word of God. Because we go and we show up like calves and we want the food to be placed in the trough and we eat and we're fat and we go home and we're full. Nobody goes home and says, hold on, pastor said that. Nah, that scripture, nah, in the, that's not what that verse says. It's time for us to start doing that, to start checking and see what does it say, right? So, I mean, a lot of people I know preach against network marketing. Oh, that's pyramid. But here's what I got, I've got gotten to learn and understand. Pyramid is one of the best way to build wealth, but the people who make money in, in a good network marketing business, because yeah, I'm going to admit you, 
you do have scams that are out there. People that make the most money means they have served the most people. And I do believe that that is one of our mandate as Christians to go out and serve, to provide a service, right? So here's a part of the challenge that we might have. As Christians, we equate success as being something bad. We wanna be significant. We wanna add value. We want to impact and change people, but we don't want success. If I were to give you the seed from this lime and you were to go and plant it and it grows, are you going to say you don't want the lemon tree or the lime tree? It's a byproduct. And that's what we have to understand that when we go out and we fulfill certain commands or we take certain actions, the byproducts will be that you'll have success, you'll have wealth, and it's okay, right? Uh, so just a quick um, scripture is just stuff to think because that's a part of what we do at Shift. We want to help you to grow, grow your mindset, shift your perception of something that you have right now to say, hmm, I've never seen it that way. Maybe I should take another look. Maybe I should see if uh, I misunderstood something. In 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, it says, and it's talking about Jesus, it says, though he was rich, yet for your sakes, he became poor that through his poverty, you might be rich. Uh, that don't make sense. Uh, Jesus died, became poor, and died so that he became poor so I can become rich. That's saying like the king was sitting on the throne and he got off the throne and says, okay, Palmonia, go sit on it. And I go, no, 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 no. No, I want to stay poor. I feel that's what we're all doing. You have to have the desire for a thing in order for it to be attracted to you. And, and that is some of the relationship and the conversation. I was just on this call earlier with um, you know, men and uh, the black men and mental health in the community and not being able to face their emotion or they weren't taught to, to, to cry and to, you know, embrace certain things. And the guy said something that was so profound. He says, imagine your bowel that somebody sh shut it up. They saw it up and you can't go. And he said, that's going to become toxic. And it's going to come up, find another way to come through and, and, and excrete. And that's what happens to us. My thing that I really want you to think on is if you are going to represent yourself as someone who represents the most high God, someone who's rich, a thousand cattle on the hills are his and all the other stuff that he represents. Why wouldn't he give you the best? Why wouldn't you look and be a representation of that majesty? And that's all I'm challenging you to do. Say, you know, it's about time for me to start at least have the desire. Because when you have a good house and a good car, right, and you live well, you're a better testimony as to the greatness of your God. Not when everything is falling apart constantly and it's like, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of confused here, right? In Matthew 7, verse 7, he says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and he shall find. Knock and it shall be open. Everything that we can have, it's contingent on us first doing something. And we take an action, God responds. Right? You ask big, he gives you bigger. Um, again, it comes down to uh, math, Psalm 45 verse 1 says, your tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. Whatever you say, your tongue is ready to write it. And once it's written, it is done. 
And of course, Proverbs 18, I think 21 or 16 says, uh, death and life lies in the power of your tongue. We are speaking ourselves into the poorhouse. We need to just start believing. And I don't know why it's growing season. That's what the message last week. So um, as I get it, I would give it on to you. So if you have people around you and forgive me, pastors and ministers, not everybody does not believe, but it's imperative. I am, as I give, I'm, I'm, I give on to you. Whatever God gives to me, I give. He says, you know what? Some pastors don't believe because how many churches do you actually walk in where the minister said, listen to me, you all need to have a business. You need to have something. Even if you have a job, you need, you're you good at cooking. Go cook and sell your, 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 your what you cook so you can leave a legacy and create something. That's what a good pastor is supposed to do. He's supposed to allow you and encourage you to use your gift to create wealth. And that gift is what will give glory to God. And that may be where your reward will come. So not necessarily, okay, I'm going to go off to get rich in some, but it's in using the gifts that you have. Miles Monroe, when he died, had written over like 60 some odd books. And he wasn't even 60, so he did more than, than one a year. Because that was his gift where he had the ability to articulate, to write, and God gave him the understanding, and he gave it back to us. So please. I'm sorry, I don't feel like, I mean, I didn't mean to come and be hard. But I desire for you to live the promises that God has given to you. You know the promises. Beloved, in 3 John 1, he says above all things, I wish that you would prosper even as your soul prosper. We can prosper and become this amazing Christian and yet around us, everything is falling apart. That does not make sense. So, I'm your host, Palmonia Gordon. Thank you for stopping by this episode of Shift. Please remember to comment, subscribe, share the information with a friend. Follow us on social media handle at Palmonia Gordon and come back tomorrow so we can again share our thoughts, our stories, and our ideas to keep you moving like the second hand on the clock. God bless you. Have a good day.